Hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. It will never be spayed or changed. Pork broccoli. <laughs> Snowflake. <laughs> Hail Baphomet! <laughs> I love beer. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve, everybody. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for tuning in. We're excited to be here. I hope you're excited to listen. We've got a lot of stuff to do on the show today. We are going to announce the winner of Sidekick 2015. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> the write-in vote for... Best co-host who will get promoted to sidekick on the Jimmy Curve. And with that in mind, I am your host, Jimmy Putnam, and with me are my co-hosts and potential sidekick candidates, Joshua Vossler. Already! And Will Doherty. You said his name first. Oh, God, I'm overanalyzing <laughs> things. Joining us on the podcast today, our very special guest, my good friend, Tim Schoenfeld. Hello, Tim Schoenfeld. Hello. We didn't think of anything clever yeah, yeah. to say. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You're too kind. How are you doing? I'm great, uh, guys. I'm really excited to be here. Let's start out by revealing the winner of Sidekick 2015. Do either of the candidates have any comments before I, the winner is revealed? Uh, I'm not saying this because I'm not confident that I did or didn't win. <laughs> but we had a conversation the other night yeah. after a few drinks and is sidekick really better than co-host? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is it? And so I looked up the definition of sidekick, and it's a person who assists, or a person's assistant or close associate, especially one who has less authority than that person. Now, a co-host right. is a person who also hosts. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. Wait, okay. is so sidekick? You're, you're I saying I might have to do more work. I, it sounds like he wants to drop out. <laughs> no, I just don't, I don't know how we came up with the idea that Sidekick was superior. I remember in the any rationale. Way. The rationale was you can have you can have any number of co-hosts, co-hosts, but you can only have one Sidekick. That means like the ranking must go main guy, Sidekick, and then the co-host tier. My rationale yeah. was that I asked David Cowsgard and just went with whatever he said. Right, that's a good way to live your life. <laughs> Here are the votes. There were two write-in casts. They both finished in a tie for third place with one vote each. In third place, my cat, Jasper. He does not win, unfortunately, but he ran a clean contest. Of- Much like the Green Party candidate. Right. <laughs> not <laughs> even close. <laughs> also tied for third place it, with one vote is not Will, hashtag anyone but Will. <laughs> Mike Perry didn't technically vote for Josh. He just voted for not Will, and I decided to make that its own separate thing. Oh, okay, because I was counting that. <laughs> okay. in my head. Yeah, no. I feel like I feel like if you would have count, if you would have established that as a category very early on, it would have had a strong showing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would have been like I don't know yeah. your mom's vote. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, it comes down to uh, Joshua Vossler and Will Doherty and. We have a winner, the winner by one vote, and now promoted from co-host to sidekick, Will Doherty. Yeah, you're in that shit too. Hey! Hey! Congratulations, Will. You are now my sidekick in the context of this show. I would like to thank my campaign manager, Ryan Dowd, (laughs) uh, for his many campaign ads. Hashtag sad lives matter. It, it was tied until the there was one final write-in vote. A lot of the votes from Will were very interesting. Like, my friend Adam just texted me, I vote for Will. He's more sidekicky, in quotation marks, which I don't think was a compliment. No. Ad- I feel like none of my votes have been compliments. Adam, uh, my friend Adam Brownell wrote a pretty scathing vote for you. Has right. there ever been a vote for someone that could be called scathing? The world's first scathing endorsement. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but I think you wanted to read some of it on air, Will. This is like when Jimmy Kimmel makes celebrities read mean tweets about themselves. So this is a vote cast by Adam Brownell for you. The, okay, this 
maybe we might have a competition on our hands because this was a vote for his vote. It was about me. It was a vote for Joshua. I counted it for whatever it was. I don't okay. remember what it was. Okay. It was a vote for Joshua, but he talked about me. This is what he said. I vote for Joshua to be the Jimmy Curve sidekick. My reasoning has nothing to do with Joshua and everything to do with Will. <laughs> Based on what I've learned from listening to the show, it seems like the only value Will brings to the world is through his amusing comments about his sad life. If Will loses, nothing changes for him. However, if Will wins, he'll feel a little better about himself. A Will with even a shred of self-esteem is a Will who brings no value to the world. Oh, man. Will may be pathetic... But he is not stupid. Once he realizes he can no longer entertain people, he will violently fall from the mountaintop, hitting every rock on the way to the bottom. Think of all the damage that would do <laughs> to, to the, the rocks. rocks. <laughs> well, he makes you sad. And now he makes you sad as a sidekick. And I want to explain why that vote, like why that rationale already failed to work. Oh. In writing this, I read it, and I don't know this. This is a friend of yours, Jimmy, correct? Yes. I do not know this gentleman, but he <coughs> feels fan like. Of the show. Yeah, he feels like he knows me very well. <laughs> right. Which means that I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> People are saying mean things about me on the internet that I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So. Th that's a weird form of validation. It is. But it's a legitimate my form. My favorite form of validation. <laughs> yeah, if anybody should feel bad about that, I think it's me. Because, like, I, I'm voting for this person not because of anything he's good at. <laughs> That's what I got. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, like lesser of two evils. It's a vote against. Will. In, <laughs> yeah. in fairness, I feel like that's how every president gets elected. Though. Sure. That's like, true. Like every single one. Nobody is like, I, this guy. Everybody's like, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, well, earlier when you said that was like the first ever scathing endorsement, that, that came to mind. I'm like, everybody who ever won a primary is then scathingly endorsed by everybody they beat. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Like, begrudgingly. Yeah, slightly better than the awful person we all hate. You know? <laughs> like, Nice. Uh, cool. So, uh, you know, up your sidekick game, Will. It's time yep. to deliver. Yeah, hey, Will. Get does your this come with a pay raise of any kind? Yep. It's a <laughs> I'll, I'll double your salary. Fantastic. <laughs> get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> That's really. I feel like it comes. I feel like it comes with not so much a pay raise, but more threat of punishment. Okay. There's. You now have some place to fall from. <laughs> so you know. It's a tiny, and tiny hit hill. hit every rock right on, on the, the way, way down. down. All right. Enough about us. Let's talk to our guest, Timothy Schoenfeld. I know you through improvisational acting. Yeah. Improv. I don't know why I, I stretched that out. You know, I think a lot of people do. Improv doesn't usually come up on, like, autocorrect. It's always improve. You know, it's, it's like <laughs> right. it's a word that's still being accepted. One of the first... Uh, it, funny conflicts we had when I started taking improv classes and you've been doing improv for 12 years with mm -hmm. your group 88 improv is I, I also feel like that's a phrase that needs to be really enunciated 88 improv not idiot improv <laughs> <laughs> that, that was an accident and I guess if it gets a laugh once in a while right. it's good 8 8 improv uh, or idiot improve <laughs> and I uh, <laughs> I get that a lot, but that's spelled, that spelled totally correct. It's just <laughs> screamed at you by your wife. Yeah. Like, right. uh, and I'm also audiences across Nebraska. <laughs> I'm also I'm, familiar with that phrase. Across Nebraska is a broad <laughs> phrase. Right. No. At, at two points within Nebraska. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so you, uh, like, I remember when I first started taking improv practices or Im improv classes at the back line. What to call the thing that we were doing was a source of major conflict because people would say, I am improving or doing improv, but technically it's supposed to be improvising. Yeah. I call it making shit up. Yeah. That's actually the second most common term by professional <laughs> improvisers is doing make em ups. Yeah. Like what to call it? Because like when you say I'm improvising, it sounds like you're trying to MacGyver your way out of a death trap, like not performing <laughs> comedy, you know. Like, well, oh, we had a real solid game plan. It <laughs> fell apart. Uh, right. We just had to improvise our way out of it. That's right. Yeah. It's like what you do in the finals when the uh, defense is too tight and like you can't yeah. quite. So uh, you, you like 12 years ago, there wasn't. 
really an improv scene in Nebraska. No, that was our brilliant plan that we are now improvising our way out of uh, was to come to <laughs> Omaha because there wasn't a big improv scene. We, we Where are um, you from? Uh, I am from a small town in Iowa, Atlantic, Iowa, mm. about an hour from here. Right. Um, Beautiful oceans there. Yeah, it's all, it's all the way on the east <laughs> well, coast. Apparently, yeah. the Atlantic Pacific Railroad ran through town, and they had to they decided to name the town after one of the two oceans. And I have no idea how they came up with the answer. We don't like history on this show, Tim. Well, uh, <laughs> I promise no more, especially Iowa history. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't acknowledge history. The world is. 30 seconds old. So, Got it. Uh, anyways, let's talk about more history. You So, 12 years ago. Yeah. So, um, my brother, uh, Nate, uh, Nate and I both were roommates with Steve Hydeen, who was in at college kind of mm-hmm. randomly. And then uh, a girl named Sarah Kennedy, who then I promptly married and took off the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I persuaded her before she woke up to marry me. <laughs> yeah. um, you got to grab them quick. Or yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll realize what your game is. Yep, yep, exactly. So, <laughs> we we were all college cronies, and we got out of college. We liked doing improv. We were all theater students, which is a pointless career oh, it's choice. it's a career terrible choice. decision. Yeah. It's, it's fulfilling, you know, but it's tough to make a living. And we decided to keep doing improv, so we thought, well, you know, Omaha's not that far away. There's not a lot going on. So, we came to Omaha and thought we'd sort of forge an improv path i guess how did you even hear about it because like i didn't even know what it like we're talking about long form improv i didn't even know what it was until like another local nebraska comedian told me about a theater and when i was halfway through my first class is when i realized it wasn't what i thought it was it's like how did you guys even know what it was as a junior in high school my my high school speech teacher I was like walking through the hall. I think I'd, I had done the, the fall play or something. I'd auditioned for it. And mm-hmm. it was after that. And she said, you're going to do speech and debate. Like as I'm walking from one class to another, not anything to do with her <laughs> class. I was like, what? You know, and then I went to this other class and eventually. <laughs> she I, didn't even know you were there. She just had Tourette's. And she was like, <laughs> you're going to do speech and debate. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, she put me in. I, you know, I guess I was sort of a, a funny guy or something in high school. And they, so she put me in like the improv category and speech and debate and then mm-hmm. in college you know early on i didn't you know i just thought it was sort of being you know screwing around or whatever and then you sort of learn there's more integrity to it or there can be and mm-hmm. we sort of pursued that and being theater people we like storytelling and and you know getting a response from an audience and so you just sort of went down that path and became more and more uh, uh you know the idea of, of creating an art form as opposed to just you know like a rubber chicken or something so I, I don't think my, I answered my, your question. But. My, der, my derisive term for the type of improv that I hate is uh, I call it standing on stage making fart noises. Yeah. Like that to me is what <laughs> that's what I always think of when I think of like the kind of performance I don't want to do. And that was part of the reason why we wanted to go to a place where it wasn't like the, where there wasn't a scene in right. a way because improv really, you know, a decade ago was four guys in bowling shirts showing up, you know, playing you know like let's have sex with can i get an object from the audience you know and <laughs> <Right>. it's like <laughs> i mean really you know and, it, and and so we we just didn't want to do that you know it's like yeah. we can be more creative than that and it's not because it's just you know terrible people or anything but we just wanted a different different route and uh so we, we kind of uh try to try to be more creative and use a part of our brain that that wouldn't otherwise get a lot of exercise you are in an improv troupe with steve Hydeen. And then two of your family members, your brother and your wife. Only your wife does not use your last name. Yeah. Schoenfeld. She yeah. uses the name Kennedy. Typically, Jimmy, in entertainment, when you see husband and wives with separate last names, it's because one of them had such a staggeringly successful career before they got married that they don't want to, you know, lose all that. It's about branding. It's about branding. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's not the case with us. <laughs> um it's because if if we didn't do that, it would be three Schoenfelds and a High Dean, and that just which, seems... which would be a great law firm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Schoenfeld, 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 and High Dean. <laughs> right. uh, just don't get represented by High Dean. That's, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. so it just felt like uh, you know it would just be sort of too corny in a way to be like, right. well, a brother, a brother, and a wife. You know, and maybe they're maybe she's the Mormon and they're the two husbands. <laughs> um, Did you consider taking her name? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Of course I, not. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the political edge, <laughs> right? Right. That it would have gotten me. Uh, so you and I just did a show called Epic Improv, 
Awesome. Uh, which was you guys doing your hour long, long form improv show with Tracy Mock, uh, illustrating the backgrounds. And I was, uh, playing the musical score. I was not too happy with my performance. You said some nice things to me. Here is my question. <laughs> Are you too nice to tell me how badly I ruined the show? Yes. That's <laughs> exactly no, no, what no, I no. feared. No, 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 Jimmy. Not at all. No. Um, no, I thought it was a great success. I mean, I thought that it, it was so fulfilling for me. And I know you talked about, I think, you know, here's here's my Jimmy Curve savvy. Was it last week yeah. or the week before you guys were talking about not seeing the light at the back of the room? On, yes. Right? Right. It's similar. And I don't say this as a cop out, but you get into that, you know, you're in the performance zone mm -hmm. and, and you don't. You don't, I didn't, I couldn't tell you everything that Tracy drew. I couldn't tell you everything that you played. I certainly couldn't tell you anything else that Nate or Steve did on stage. <laughs> right. Because I was there. <laughs> right. And that's the part that I care about the most. <laughs> I have such bad show amnesia. I guess I'm, I'm aware of the audience because you, they're, they're the, for us, we're a four person team. So they're the fifth <laughs> member of the show in a way. You yeah. want to, you know, you, their energy is really important, but they're just, it's sort of weird. It's hard to give notes about a show that I was in. I really, right. I don't pay, you just don't analyze it that way. You're just in the mm -hmm. moment and it's mm -hmm. coming and going and it's coming in and going out. And then, so at the end Jimmy, of it, you could have ruined the show. I <laughs> was not, <laughs> I was not super happy <laughs> but with myself. I'll tell you this the guy who runs the space, he, he was just raving. He's like, Oh, I wanted to bring improv. This was so awesome. You guys were great. The you guys crowd are reacted welcome back. very well. Welcome back anytime. Yeah. So I think it's hard that even Jimmy could have ruined a show and then it would have gotten that kind of response. So I, I feel that was pretty objective to be fair i feel i've ruined everything i've ever been a part of <laughs> so that's why uh hey hey in fairness i feel like i'm the one who ruined the jimmy curve <laughs> <laughs> you just got promoted to sidekick my man <laughs> uh, on the titanic <clears throat> let's <laughs> right. um well cool uh what do you have coming up what what's coming up for 88 improv well we're gonna we're starting kind of a new schedule we're gonna be every third Saturday at the Backline Improv Theater. And when I say every, I mean at least in April. Okay. Uh, we'll <laughs> see. We're, we're at a time in life just personally where we're, we're all just kind of consumed with so much other stuff. We really mm -hmm. love doing improv, but we're really terrible mm -hmm. at promoting and organizing things mm -hmm. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to continue to do epic improv that takes a little more coordination, so I guarantee that won't happen every time. But we would <laughs> right. like to do that at the Backline if we can get the logistic, the technical logistics to work out. Uh, we're going to be performing at Styles Pub during the Omaha Improv Festival, which is a really, um, I'm kind of impressed with that festival for Omaha. Um, and then other than that, I mean, we get, we get hired occasionally. Um, oh, you know what? We teach. We, we teach at some high schools in Omaha. We do oh. some improv, the 88 Improv Academy. We actually go to a couple of high schools in like a, a, a one class a week that we'll go and we'll teach some like drama two or advanced drama kind of students. Um, and that that's really cool. It's kind of fulfilling. Actually, the teaching and coaching stuff, I'm, I'm sort of starting to realize that just by the sheer number of failures I've experienced in improv, I've got something to teach. Hmm. You, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, in fact, coach an improv team that I'm on. You are my improv coach. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I try not to take it too seriously, and I hope that it's not like a devaluation for the people that I'm coaching, but it's like... You've it, never hit me. <laughs> I sort of realize <laughs> I'm not going to have all the answers just because I'm a, quote, coach. You know, it's like right. you're just going to be there to give your best sort of advice. You know what's funny? Can I, can I talk about this for a second? The idea of being coached is so different for me than I think what most people in comedy and improv are used to, because... Growing up playing sports, like I'm used to being screamed at and told to run and do push-ups, and like you, you, you eventually develop this mindset that it's not personal, and that when you when you do something wrong, when you miss a tackle or when you make a mistake, like a coach yells at you about that mistake you made, and he's not, it's not personal. He's just trying to tell you not to do it again because it hurts the team and it's all about improvement. But like when I first started taking improv classes and getting involved in comedy it's so the opposite and it's and so it's, gentle <laughs> two years later that i've been doing this and i still am not used to it and i get angry because when when something goes wrong i want to be like that was a mistake but like people have zero capacity to handle that yeah it yeah. has to be all positive it has to be handheld it has to be, and i i don't 
I don't, I'm not used to working like that. Yeah. I don't deal well with it. So like, is that, I am, a am I just crazy? <laughs> no, you're totally right. <laughs> is that, is that a failure or a feature of like the improv community? That's, that's what I'm getting at. I, I can't help but feeling that it is a, a failure of a person to not be able to take direct criticism. Not because that's true, but just because it's how I was raised and it's what I'm used to. Yeah, I think that criticism should be... I, I think everybody who wants to learn, genuinely learn, needs to be told when they're right and wrong. Right. And uh, it's a struggle for me to give that kind of direct um, you know, coaching. But you, you realize, yeah, it's like, gosh, I wish somebody would have told me you know, that, <laughs> right. that, I, that I mess with the seam of my pants endlessly as a nervous tick or something, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. or, or that I'm bulldozing my teammates and it's just miserable for everybody else on the team. Like somebody just needs to tell me that repeatedly until I correct it. Well, that's kind of my thing is like, if you don't tell me what I'm doing wrong, I won't know. I think another feature, I mean, another reason that happens is because there's, you know, it's so easy to be just a coach. You know, it's like uh -huh. coaches that aren't really seasoned improvisers to really know what is right and what is wrong. And it's such a relative kind of a f art form. And yeah. somebody who has a, a distinct enough, like, nope, this is the way it should be. This is the way it shouldn't be. It may not be right universally, but it's right for me. And that's how I'm going to coach you. Like, you can learn from that person. You may realize they're kind of full of crap. But, <laughs> right. but at least well, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's where I feel like I'm at because for a long time that I was doing this, I kept thinking like, man, I I could get some of these principles across so well. Like I feel like mm -hmm. I would be better at teaching people how to do some of this stuff. But eventually I realized that the people I was working with would have no tolerance for the way I would go about doing it. And that, that no one, very few of the people who come through that theater – would be able to take me giving them directions and like, yeah. and be able to, and come away with any kind of a positive feeling. But I, to me, I don't think anything of it. I'm just like, that's how things work. Well, I brought you a gift. Oh, Ooh, let's do that. <laughs> can I give you, can I give you guys a gift? Yeah, man. I'm <laughs> I have been listening. Okay. So real brief, not interesting story. I was uh, tooling around and I'd never, I've never been to Trader Joe's. Thought I'd go in. I quick uh, got some dreadlocks and and uh, tie dye <laughs> shirt just because. Mm -hmm. Leave your socks at the door. Yeah. All I, right. I, I yep. And anyway, so I went in and I'm like, what do I get these guys? I don't have much of a budget. And I thought, well, I've never also <laughs> never had a kumquat. I don't even know. What, I really don't even know what one is. I have no idea either. And then I thought, well, I could Google it, and then I'd have some facts about kumquats. And then I thought, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll, Sorry, be, I'll, I'll be honest, Will, that feels like sidekick work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so help yourselves. Right. I don't know if these are if they'll if they're deadly or not. They look like a cherry tomato, do but you, they're an orange look. It's got an orange peel. Can you just eat this or do you have to cook it? I have no idea. I'll be so disappointed if this doesn't taste like a citrus fruit. I have uh, no idea. I really don't do I, you eat the skin. We don't have to eat it them. It literally anything. smells like Nothing. Yeah. yeah, there's no smell. None. I'm, I don't. Do you have to peel this? Can I just squeeze it into my mouth? Uh, I just kind of rubbed my teeth on it. It has an orange rind taste to it, so I think it's got to be peeled. We don't have to spend much time on this, but I didn't oh, want to come without what? a gift. I got a little juice. I'm excited. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go for it, guys. Are you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you put the whole thing in there. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're supposed to eat the skin. Oh no, it's definitely rindy. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you supposed to eat the outside? How, but how are you supposed to peel it? Well, there's, <laughs> there are seeds too. I, I think. Mm -hmm. I think peeling it is definitely sidekick work. Mm -hmm. no, I'm gonna do one too. Seeds. I'm now eating the rind. I uh, hope the rind isn't poisonous. Whoa! I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna eat it. My, it's actually pretty good. It actually kind of is. My seven year old son just bit into a kiwi. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? How can you not know you're gonna peel a kiwi? Well, someone's listening right now, going, "Guys, stop! <laughs> yeah. You're dying! You're gonna die!" I'm, I'm gonna Google really quick. Can I eat the peel of a kumquat? Ugh. What does it taste like? Sour? <laughs> it tastes like a citrus fruit. No, well, kind of has like a. Yeah, it's got a soury, orangey. Mm. It's like a lemon orange sort of. I got a real sour. Like I, I dug off the peel on the outside. Mm -hmm. I just got it inside. I oh. bit into it. And then, like, the center just, like, squirted into the back of my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was on like the label. A, like a fruit gusher. Mm hmm It was just, and it was super sour. I found a wiki how on how to eat a kumquat. <laughs> Ooh, wash it thoroughly. <laughs> That's step number one. 
All right, yep. yeah, get to the real ones. <laughs> oh, you, no matter where you get the kumquat, you should wash it thoroughly, especially if you'll be eating the skin. Well, I can eat the skin. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's what I learned from that. Number two, prepare the kumquat. Though the skin is edible, if you'd like to peel it with your fingers, just as you would peel a clementine, uh, or even use a knife to peel it or cut it in half, that's fine too. The kumquat will have a few seeds, so if you're committed to peeling it, you can pick out the seeds. An alternative, rub it between the palms of your hands for 10 to 15 seconds. The outside of the kumquat is covered in an oil-like substance. It can now be eaten whole without peeling. Well, <laughs> we should add to that, you can also just put it in your mouth. <laughs> like a Like a toddler. You can dip the kumquat in sugar for an extra sweet sensation. <laughs> you can do that uh, with I tell you what, though. guys, why don't you keep these on the back table and just offer them to your guests? <laughs> and uh, see, they if, don't see if they know. No, of course, there's a a born on date. Why can I, I? Apparently, I wasn't supposed to eat that oil. Uh, well, I will be periodically updating you guys throughout this podcast and letting you know how I feel. Uh, my. Personal theory is that Will has consumed multiple things that will have a, a worse effect on him than this kumquat will have on me uh, on Correct. the show, live on the air. So I'm not terribly worried about it, but thank you. I actually well, found it to no, be no. delicious. Actually, if you if you check the packaging, the active ingredient in boner pills is kumquat. So. <laughs> okay, <that's>, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, I thought of some improv games that we can play. Uh, Tim, I know your game. Hmm? <laughs> I, sorry, that was my yes. Yes, I am. You bet. I'm always game. I mean, improvisers are so but good at yes ending. It, it, it sounded obnoxious. Which is, mm -hmm. It gets obnoxious because it's like, hey, do you want to play an improv game? And my response becomes, what? Do, do you want me to? You know? <laughs> what, do, how do you want me to respond? I'm right. so flexible. You know, you just tell me anything you want. Uh, Joshua and Will, I'm a little worried about you guys, but you're you game. You should be. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this. Um, we do a lot of news stories on this show where we talk about just sort of wacky things that have happened or current events or things like that. I thought it'd be fun to try and analyze how those situations occur. And so I'm calling this game, I guess this is what happened in, in, in some of these stories, you know, w some straight, like, so like we did a story a little while ago about a guy who got arrested for possession of marijuana that was found in a container marked not weed. I want to know the conversation that guy had like right before he left. Like when he got the <laughs> weed and put it like, Tim, you be the guy, you be the guy, you be the guy who has weed. Okay. Oh, oh man. Jeez. Like I tell you, time got away from me. I got, I got this weed that I gotta, I gotta sell across state lines. Oh man. But I got to pick my son up from t-ball practice oh man that's right i don't know what i'm gonna do oh, i don't you know what i got i got a whole vehicle full of weed but it's mine okay all uh, right and, and so i want to keep that you know different but i could take yours if you'd like yeah but i do not want to get Dude. it confused with my weed god all i've got is this old mayonnaise jar to put it in yeah that's a we oh, okay okay in the small outside chance I should get pulled over, nothing screams weeds in here like a mayonnaise jar. That's, I mean, that's what they look for. First thing. I guess we're out of luck. I guess it's just not going to happen. I got that label maker I mentioned a little while ago. Okay. Well, don't, I mean, don't write, don't write Jimmy's weed on there. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not weed. <gasps> what? Oh, <laughs> that's a great, let me. End scene. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I had fun. I, had fun. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. I, I got another one here. We're going to try a couple of these. Uh, can we try Can we try two more of these? I wanted to do a voice. Okay, here. I'll, yeah, I'll, you, I'll, here you, can do, you can do a voice in this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited now. All right. Uh, Kentucky, the University of Kentucky, just got upset by Wisconsin on Saturday in the final four of the college basketball season. Now, Kentucky was the the overwhelming favorite to win a national championship. They were going to go 40 and 0. No one has gone undefeated in college basketball since I believe 1973 when Indiana did it. But Kentucky was the best team all year. They came into this game 38 and 0 with two games left. They were going to go 40 and 0. Um the a local Kentucky athletic retailer 
lost an estimated, I think, $10 million when they got upset because they had already printed up so much 40-0 and national championship Kentucky gear. And the university got a cut of it. So the University of Kentucky also lost a million dollars. Like, let's say, let's say that this is, let's say that this conversation is taking place. It, it is starting uh, two minutes before tip off of that game. <laughs> <laughs> the game they lost. All right. Guys, I really think we've hit this one out of the, I really think we've got a can't miss situation here. I you 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 told me not to do it. Well, but oh, that's right. We're doing voices. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. We're doing voices. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart. I'm gonna reset. No, you know what? I'm just not from Kentucky. <laughs> we we, you, we know <laughs> you guys. You guys told me not to do it, but I went ahead and ordered. All of the undefeated national championship gear that we planned. It's going to be here tomorrow. Oh, oh my Lord. I mean, I mean oh. now don't worry, Dale. It's going to, I, we've got this one in the bag. You know, now I'm thinking about it. Like, I think that could be a slam dunk. Get it? <laughs> slam dunk. Because <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, basketball. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, we are high-fiving right now. That's what I like about you, Dale. You're always, I mean, you are, you're the, you came up with the slogan. Well, I literally thought about it for like five minutes and changed my mind. Right. I can do that. You, you came up with the slogan for the t-shirts. Yeah. 40 and 0, undefeated. That brilliant, brilliant piece of marketing there, Dale. I mean, that was great. That was great. And so, I mean, I tell you what, guys, and I'm not from Kentucky. But this team seems like the like a pretty good. I mean, they're going to win it all, right? I mean, there's no chance no they're going to lose. Chance they can lose. Yeah. The only chance, technically, that they could lose is if they score fewer points than the opponent during the time of now, play. Now, Travis, that's cr you're always a skeptic. No, I'm just trying to be. I'm just. You said there's no. I way. mean, you are such a Debbie Downer. Every time Dale comes up with a good idea, here comes Travis to well, talk about what could go wrong. Well, listen, I don't even think that's like likely to happen because we already have the shirts printed. See, Dale, that's exactly right. The shirts are printed. They're on the way. Look, now, how how much exactly did you spend on these shirts? Uh. Jim Barry, I spent J Jim Jim Barry. Uh, that's Jim, what I'm calling you. Jim is, that, Barry. is it one name? Is it one word or two words? It's Dad. Jim Barry. Jim. <laughs> You're not from here. You can't I, say it. It's, you don't know how to say Jim Barry. Jim Barry. It's J Jim Barry. Uh, what was what? your question? How, how much? How much did you spend on printing all these shirts? Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Yeah. That's a lot of moonshine. Yeah, right but but now, we're gonna sell them. Now, fellas, if it makes you feel any better, I went down to the Haymarket the other day and I talked to my gypsy friend, and she uh, read the stars and said that Kentucky was going to win. Now, Dale, that's just good science. Yeah, she uh, and, and uh, she, I bet money with my gypsy on it. That is, you, you bet your gypsy on the game? Yeah. Well, it is. It Point is, spread. <laughs> Kentucky's going to win, but by how many points, you know? 20 maybe i don't know i mean that's I a don't... conservative estimate yeah no i here's the here's the problem jimbury i spent <laughs> i spent the 40 million dollars <clears throat> we don't have 10 million dollars I, I said 40 but i meant 10 Net. we're gonna sell the shirts for four times what i spent make 40 million dollars Jim Barry ain't now, good at math. I'm just, I, no, yeah, <laughs> he, well, I'm sorry. Not, I know, I, I know. I'm the. He's I'm, a big picture guy. I'm a, I'm, I'm the dummy here. I understand that, <laughs> yeah. but maybe you can just explain this to me. What, what in the event? I, I know the psychic up predicted <laughs> Kentucky was going to win. Yep. But now, in the event uh, that perhaps they should be uh, upset. Now, Jim Barry, were you even listening? The psychic predicted they were going to win. No, no. Now, now, I know, I know, I know she did. I know she did. All right. Uh, but I've had some trouble with psychics in my time. Well, were you going to Dale's psychic? Uh, no, no, were Dale, you, Dale, calm down. Were you now, going I, wasn't, to, I wasn't going to your psychic. You weren't going to Heather down in the hay market? I've, I've never seen Heather in my life. 
What? You're, you're blushing. <coughs> Jim Bird, you I've fuck never, Heather. I never. I do not. I do not know Heather. Do you fuck I've, my gypsy? I've never. <laughs> she, 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 if it's any consolation, she saw it coming. I mean, I feel. <laughs> I feel like all her predictions are now and forever tainted, gentlemen, by Jim Barry. Gentlemen, Jim Barry. let's get back. <laughs> and sing. <laughs> oh, I have. Oh, I, I, I have. I have one more that we have to do really quick. Okay, so I have reoccurring problems with pests in my house. I have um, ants that we just we just killed a bunch of ants, and last year we had a, a huge mouse issue. Uh, like my cat, I think killed eight to ten mice, and we caught like a bunch more in traps. And we had a theory that we just killed all of the mice that were coming into the house until I found a dead mouse on the floor in that laundry room two days ago. So I'd like you guys to have a discussion as the mice <coughs> deciding to come back into my house this this spring after all of the death and destruction that happened to your clan last year. Okay, guys, like. It's getting real cold, all right? Like, winter was really rough. I mean, we just... I know we had a rough year last year, but I think it's time to make another incursion. I just can't... I just <laughs> look into his eyes and see his eyes every time I think of that house. Hold yourself together, Jerry! No! <laughs> no! I'm sorry, Captain. I, I'm not sure I can go back in there. I've already lost a third of my tail and six friends. Look, <laughs> if you me. wanted to live forever, you wouldn't have been a mouse. <laughs> All I want's a hole with some cheese, Captain. Just a nice hole with some cheese where I can die slowly in old age. Come on, man. Get your shit together. <laughs> That's all we want. That's all any of us want, Jerry. It's a nice hole, but sometimes we have to take it. All right, all right. I'm sorry, Captain. Now, we're going to go back in there. Now, we know they got the cat. There's going to be traps. You just got to watch your ass. I ain't no afraid no cat. <laughs> I'm with yeah? you. I'm with you, Tiny. <laughs> Not afraid of the cat, huh? Not afraid of the cat? Hell no. Have you ever looked into the eyes of your own demise? <laughs> Have you ever stared death in the face? If you're not afraid of the cat... I ain't never you, been no afraid of no pussy. You should be. <laughs> I can smell their breath after he's chewed on my friends. <laughs> it's hideous. It's them or it's you. All right, all right. You didn't do... You can't blame yourself, Jerry. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll get it together. Listen, I, I've been in there a couple of times. A couple of times. I know the lay of the land. When we get in there, we're going to have to resist the peanut butter. That's how they get you. It's on every trap, peanut butter. It's hard. Wait, is there some peanut butter right now? <laughs> Oh my god, wait. Resist it! I can smell- No! Oh my god, that sounds no! so Don't good! Don't do it! Don't go in oh, there! Don't do it! Oh, but it sounds so good right now! Ah, <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> I can't do it! <laughs> oh, still alive! <laughs> 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 Did you just do meat wad? <laughs> And Almost. Scene. <laughs> oh. No, 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 get close to doing my meat wad. <laughs> you guys, it's crazy. Oh, my God. That was my best uh, attempt at making fun of the news, but Joshua, you're a professional. What sure. do you say we do some of yours? <clears throat> Let's do some uh, Joshua Vossler news. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua Vossler news. Hello, everybody. I shot the sheriff. But I did not shoot the deputy for my Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> a state trooper has been uh, reprimanded for posing for, uh, for a photo with Snoop Dogg at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin uh, because the rapper has several convictions for drug possession. Uh, Billy Spears was working security at uh, the March event when Snoop Dogg asked to take a picture with him. The artist posted the image in Instagram with the comment, Me and my deputy dog, uh, Department of Public Safety and Transportation officials saw the posting and cited Spears 
for uh, deficiencies that require counseling by a supervisor. <laughs> and this really pissed me off. Oh, no, wait, where it does, just makes me oh, mad. Where does this guy work out of? He's a he's a he's a he's a like what state is he? Texas. Is, okay, cool. Yeah, Texas, and he's getting in trouble for taking a picture with a and he he didn't even know who he was. <laughs> yeah, right. I was just gonna say I thought I heard that wrong. You said Snoop Dogg asked for a picture. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Snoop Dogg came up to this cop at the festival and said, right. "Hey, will you, will you take a picture?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, sure." Took a picture of it, posted on an Instagram. Nothing nefarious about yeah. it. Wow. And the guy, the cop gets in trouble because it's, and the cop didn't even know who he was. He just thought he was some dude. What was the guy supposed to do? Like if Snoop Dogg comes up and asks for a picture with you, are you supposed to like tase him? I mean, what, what is well, the other is, reaction? That's like, what made me mad about it is the, is the public perception of law enforcement. It's stuff like this that gives cops like they are, you know, that they should be treated than anybody else. Right. Different than anybody else. Why not? Even, even if he did know who Snoop Dogg was, knew his 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 past criminal past who cares like is that who he is now you can't take a picture with somebody because they have yeah. some sort of criminal record yeah it's crazy it's just insane to me and it's dumb and it made me very very mad i'm just really disappointed in snoop <laughs> why <laughs> like because we've come a long way from like it's one a seven on an undercover uh, cop uh, right like, <laughs> He was he was at the forefront of the cop killing rap movement in the early 1990s. Well, he was but, not at the forefront. Ice T was obviously at the forefront. Right, but Snoop, but. but Snoop, but what makes Snoop Dogg great is that Snoop Dogg is the most fun person on the planet to be. Yeah, like at any one moment, and that's the entire vibe he gives off. Like I feel like Snoop has transcended weed. <laughs> like he's not like it's weird to thinking to think about Snoop Dogg as like a guy. So it's like saying, yeah, Tim Schoenfeld. You know how much that guy breathes air. Like it's not it, it a almost fair a fair amount. Uh, a fair amount. It also doesn't. It, I just don't think it defines him anymore. He's just transcended it. He's what? just he's now famous for being Snoop. It it would be different if like Al Capone had posed for an Instagram picture with a cop like, Oh, you haven't <laughs> caught me yet. <laughs> Rub your nose. It's like I've been convicted all up and down. Look at this is the justice system working. I am Snoop Dogg. I have right. been convicted. Right. Like he, like there, like Snoop Dogg doesn't hide anything about what he does. I mean, maybe that's what bothers him so much. I don't know. It just it seems strange. Like, oh, well, it's that like, guy. Uh, well, you didn't know who this guy was. and You took a picture with him. Well, this is, turns out to be who he is. And we don't like him. So we're going to rep reprimand you for not being a dickhead. That's basically right. what they're doing. Right. Did Good job with what? the goodwill towards the black community, right. man. <laughs> right. How are we supposed to keep this image up? <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly right. The most implausible <laughs> thing about this, even more so that Snoop Dogg randomly asked to take a picture with the cop, <laughs> did he really not know who Snoop Dogg was? You got to see the picture. Or... Probably not. Now see, now see, <laughs> was that just the thing he came up with when they're like, what the fuck is with this picture? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> now, see, right. And, and like, Will, you're really hung up on this idea that, like, Snoop Dogg would willingly take a picture with a cop. But well, to that me, that's the most indicative thing of what makes him Snoop. Like, he is exactly the type of guy who would just be hanging out, see a cop, and be like, I'm going to go take a picture with a cop. That sounds kind of funny. That's exactly the kind of thing that he does all the time. <laughs> like, for as famous as Snoop is... He just seems like the most accessible person to me. I don't know. I mean, he's probably not. Let's have him on the show. I feel like <laughs> I think let's it... be honest. When they first when they first reprimanded him, nobody no nobody else at the sheriff's department knew who Snoop Dogg was either. They're just like, what? You got this picture with the black dude on the internet? <laughs> right. It was so it was it was retconned from both ends. Like, right. yeah, I didn't know who he was. Yeah, we no, did. I think like, what probably the highest guy up the food chain accidentally touched the picture on his Instagram and got a heart and he's like, I liked it. And I don't know how to unlike it. <laughs> Why would you put me in that situation? <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> did yeah. you have, did you have more that you wanted to I mean, I just feel bad for the cop. He is why why it does why feel bust like, that guy up for it does feel like a like for the first time in a while a cop did something sort of publicly <laughs> like cool cool and friendly <laughs> take a picture of myself getting a gallon of milk for a like a, a woman with 
like you know a little kid or something like what are you doing that for (laughs) right you know what that kid did (laughs) back in the day you know what he might grow up to possibly be someday yeah (laughs) right yeah you're gonna take a picture of yourself helping an old lady cross the street now people are gonna be expecting cops to help them all the time (laughs) (laughs) when they're in need (laughs) Did, did they even bother to frame it like oh it's just you know it's just a policy that we just don't do you know we don't want to be taking selfies with the public it's just a bad practice because i can see where it's not real smart it's like. it technically isn't a formal like disciplinary action so <laughs> it, like he's not suspended or anything like that but he's right. getting counseling from his supervisors you know where they sit down and they're like well, here's all the rap artists and th- yeah they're... <laughs> or or it's probably more just like I know it's 50 cent, but it's pronounced fitty. Yeah, like, <laughs> sorry, I got to do this. I know it's dumb. And then yeah. this is why you can't do this. DMX, they- yes. Ja Rule, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, if it would have been common, they'd have had no problem. Right. Uh, he's in commercials. All right, you got one more? Um, some notable people died this uh, Oh, this yeah, last that's week. right. Um, the inventor of the pet rock, Gary Dale. Oh, yeah. Um, died at the age of 78. Pet rock. Let's not say inventor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong word for the thing he did. God's like, no, I'm still here. <laughs> you, you know what? Like, there is there is an entire branch of, like, I don't know whether to call it, like, the economic sciences that's just about rebranding things. And that guy is the greatest at it ever. Like the guy, like there's the guy I talked about before on the show who invented the concept of a high end alcohol. And he, he, I think it was, uh, uh, Sky Vodka is his company or some vodka, which is just, it's the same as other vodka. It's just marketed as a high end vodka and he charges three times as much. Oh, Brazilian killer vodka. There's <laughs> Brazilian killer vodka. Well, he, <laughs> he got the idea. When he saw like a bunch of like kids or like college guys doing like daring each other to doing shots of Jägermeister because it was so awful. And like they were sort of daring each other, like, see, you can drink this horrible liquor. And he was like, he cause like he, he got the idea that he could sell that based on that concept and make people buy it for that. Is this like party drink that, you know, like, let's go out and do Jäger guys. Cause it's gonna, that's how crazy it's going to be tonight. And yeah. like the guy, the pet rock guy sort of. You know, it was like the best in the in our modern world. I mean, people have been doing this for hundreds of years, obviously. But there's another guy who just started selling KU undefeated shirts. <laughs> UK. <laughs> KU is Kansas. Sorry. UK is Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're on very thin ice with me, I'm Tim. Right now, super <laughs> sports literate. Look, whenever hockey happens, I'm a big fan of all the field goals. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Who else died? Uh, John Lennon's ex-wife Cynthia Lennon died at age 75. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the creator of the Pillsbury Doughboy died at age 89. Oh, yeah. I, I did I did say at one point that if I'm ever, like, a successful enough comedian that I can give my fans a collective name, it was going to be Doughboys. No, wait. You said <laughs> – that's good. Did You you said the, inv- the, the creator of the Pillsbury Doughboy? Yeah. So not the Pillsbury company, but the it'd ad be, guy? Yeah, it'd be whoever worked for the marketing company that okay. had to create him. So the ad guy. I the heard, ad guy. I heard he was it. really good friends with the – pet rock guy and now <laughs> they just died like two hours away from each other it was so romantic <laughs> it's like it's it's, it's funny because like the, both those guys have done sort of historic things and between them created nothing <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they created many a thanksgiving day. really they created a lot of profit for their shareholders yeah they made a lot of money <laughs> selling the ideas of things that don't exist i, th- I want to if i can as a guest but it, you kind of went real quick past the uh john lennon's ex-wife yeah which i think was that I, there, was that before or after yoko before well, okay. i was gonna say i, I think they're I, my hopes kind of got up but maybe yoko Oh, <laughs> the center of the story and i'm like all those records i bought as an investment would find no that'd there. been a that would have been a whole news story <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Is, and uh yoko ono is still alive yes unfortunately oh yeah. she's very avant-garde you, you gotta look we gotta look look her up she's got there's Good audio of, yoko on the there's show audio of her singing like impromptu at these art galleries i've actually never heard 
Yoko Ono music. Oh. Oh, Neither man. has anyone. <laughs> you gotta play some. I have no opinion about Yoko. Ono. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, know I got I mean I got one more story. Do that, it. Okay. If you want more to edit. <laughs> All right. Can't uh, have too much content. Uh, an uh, uh, apartment complexes in Seattle are opting to use DNA testing to identify the unattended dog duty uh, that's around the apartment complex. Biopet Vet Lab from Knoxville, Tennessee, is providing its poo prints testing kits to 26 apartments and condo complexes uh, and homeowners associations in that particular region. Aaron, uh, oh shit. Aaron Atkins, property manager at I an apartment you were reading complex, us the slogan of the <laughs> <company>. <laughs> uh, says that the messes are all over the place. He says that people are just lazy, I guess, and that's why uh, since February 2014, tenants have been paying a one-time fee of twenty nine ninety five for DNA testing uh, of uh, dog shit around the complex. Now this is so not, I'm just waiting for like the CSI, <laughs> you know, pet detective dog duty show. Okay. Tim, you, you manage a condo. Is this like yeah. something? You, and you, you were saying that this is something that people are doing here. Yeah, in Omaha, there's a, a pretty big uh, apartment condo community that has begun doing this. Yeah, they, they, not the one that I'm manage, but uh, I could see the, the people who don't have dogs just get so they get so upset like they just to them it is such right. a, a like how could you possibly leave, <laughs> right. leave natural animal poop in nature how can that possibly <laughs> be a thing yeah it's not naturally occurring you know i mean I, and i can understand you step in it or something but well it's uh, oregon it's, too so i just imagine the people with dogs are just like dude it's it's na it's natural man yeah, right yeah. like it's part of the earth hey eventually. man the dogs were here before us <laughs> Like we Who, stole from them. <laughs> it's organic, bro. Who am I to pick it up? We built a sidewalk the in the dog walk in the dog's bathroom, man. That's our problem. I've I have two questions about this story. Number one is that apparently I don't understand how DNA works because shit is made of food, not people or animals <laughs> in this case. So I you can DNA test shit. Yeah, I mean it would have. Like, like traces of cells and stuff, but yeah, like it would that is that like an easy that seems like it would be mm -hmm. a really complex pro yeah, is it's made it's easier. Do I, I don't know, I'm a, I'm as literate with my science as I am with my basketball. I mean, it goes anything, <laughs> anything that goes days. anything in your body, like will have your DNA on it, so like it goes through your stomach, so it have stomach acids and all that stuff, right? I just like to see that you know, since the discovery of DNA, that the natural progression has been. Let's not quite cure cancer. Let's instead <laughs> right. make sure that when someone steps in dog poop, we can find somebody. For <laughs> right. Well, that's the second thing. Like, I would be so angry if I lived in one of these complexes and I got charged a fee so that they could do, like, dog testing DNA. Like, $29? <laughs> oh, right. Like, yeah. hey, I've got a super awesome idea. How about instead you just spend a bunch of money and provide a service where you pay low-income workers to pick up dog shit. <laughs> right. Now, we're employing right. people, and we're providing a useful service to our residents. Yeah, but then you'd have to employ them from Tennessee and get them all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to work. It's going to be a long commute. Plus, then you don't get to feel your righteous <laughs> vengeance outrage. Yeah, that it like, seems like a thousand <laughs> options. Like, make right. a more, like, put snossages in one corner of the yard so that that's where they all go right. naturally. Like, <laughs> or isn't there like pepper spray or something they put on the ground to keep them away? I, I've never, I've never even really understood people who are just that picky about their lawn. Like, I, that makes no sense to me. I, I, I mean. Yeah, if you're that picky about your lawn, buy a house <laughs> right. with a lawn. Well, right. I feel like, I mean, it's not that people are really picky about their lawn. They're picky about their carpet if their shoes have shit on it. That's what they're picky about. Why are you running? Why aren't you? Stay on the sidewalk. <laughs> That's what it's, it's called the walk on the side. That's where you're supposed to be. The brand guy. Where's the branding guy? You <laughs> need to call this area the dog toilet and this area the sidewalk. <laughs> and it's, a, it's done. That's Put a pet true. rock next to it. <laughs> pet true. rock poop over here. Do we all feel pretty good about this? Plugs. What do we have coming up? 
You guys on anything? No. Nope. <laughs> Is anyone on any shows? I'm on nothing coming up. So, Omaha Improv Festival. I've got a slot on that coming up in May. That's a month away, though. Yep. Um, 88 Improv is doing some of that. And yeah. then also our third, third third Saturdays. Third Saturdays at the back line. Third Saturdays at the back line. Uh, the the limited, the the one, one man down version of 88 Improv since your wife is trying to keep a baby alive. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> She's doing a good job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The baby is way alive. How? <laughs> How is is it thriving? <laughs> it, it, she is. She, oh, even she, she well. I'm one of those. God damn it, Tim. Now I care. Once like, yeah. you've, you've labeled it. <laughs> hey, so now I, I ca- think, labeled her. Look, okay. let's. Why don't we? Why don't we just stay with it for now and let the baby decide its own gender <laughs> in its own time? <laughs> Come on, what is this Oregon? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, We're halfway between Kansas and Oregon here in Nebraska. So. Uh, can't win. Halfway, the way we measure halves in the Midwest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. halfway between Kansas and Oregon. We are, it's a Kansas half. So, okay, well, uh, so Jimmy Curve listeners, thank you for tuning in. Come out to see all of us on nothing. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be taking a trip to Marquette, Michigan, where I'll be performing at Northern Michigan University. Uh, oh, really? For the nice. creative writing class. Oh, wow! Uh, nice. That is going to be like seven people and probably in a classroom, and it's going to be super weird. <laughs> uh, so you six, seven people in that classroom uh, <laughs> come to class that day. <laughs> Everyone else, just do your thing. Like <laughs> whatever, whatever you're doing right now to listen to this, do it again next week. <laughs> Uh, you could audit the class <laughs> just for the, just for the performance. I yeah, I have to stay here and take care of Will's dog. So that's what I'll be doing. Come catch me out on the bike trail. I'll be you might walking find you have a different opinion about dog shit after this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, no, I mean, it's pretty bad right now. <laughs> um, I just have an even worse opinion of like going through the, the calorie burn of suing someone like that yeah. and, and investigating a crime. Like, I don't have time for that. Uh, that is not a license to commit crimes against me. <laughs> still 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 don't commit crimes against me but while you're considering it uh thank you for listening to this show thanks for tuning in uh I'd like to thank our guest tim schoenfeld thank you so much yeah it was hey. a pleasure to be here are we doing the drop or not now it feels weird oh i'm sorry i wasn't i don't i you know what i just tuned out for a second Do you know- <laughs> So I wasn't looking for anything. That's license for you listening to do the same? No, I don't know. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, I, I, I listen well, to this show when I'm up late with my new daughter and uh, the it that you talked about. Yeah. And, and so now I'll listen to myself doing the show like four or five times in a row. It'll be great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Here, I'll do it again and I'll hit the drop. Uh, for our guest, Tim Schoenfeld. Hey. 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 That was kind. I didn't even see all those people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. We had a good time with you. So uh, for my co-host, Joshua Vossler. Yeah. Yeah. And my sidekick, Will Doherty. The Robin of the podcast. <laughs> I am the Batman of the podcast, Jimmy Putnam. Uh, this, oh, this is uh, Sunglasses by a Ferocious Jungle Cat. Thank you and good night.
So this is a this is one um, oh God, that I'm doing it again, huh? Yeah, I'm not gonna make you. I'm not gonna make you take the reins. You just react to me. Is that better? Yeah, I'm sorry. That was bad. I it wasn't know. bad. It was fine. It was fine. Like you just it, it, the only part that was awkward is when you would just like shake your head and throw your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect him to say that. <laughs> Which is ninety percent of improv. But you handled it. Your responses were fine. It was. The part, the only part I would have to edit out of that is like me and Tim laughing at you, <laughs> <laughs> having been there many times myself. 